Jenna, maybe I'll start with you and ask you both the same question, but I'll throw it to you first. Um, I mean, you guys probably get lots of scripts and, and you know, in your, in your job, but this one, I guess, must have stood out. Did you, how quickly did you realise into reading it that this was something that you wanted to at least try to, to be a part of? Uh, I mean, it grabbed me right away. I was sort of in it within the first five pages, but yeah, you get, you know, you read a lot of stuff, but I think for me, oddly, I was coming from not working. Like I had taken like two years off to kind of, you know, metamorphosize into a parent and take my time. And, and, um, and so it was, it was kind of a first to be reading stories and scripts about parents, really. Um, having children, that kind of love, building family, um, as, a, as a new parent myself. And so I felt like I was reading it kind of for the first time in a way, like how I, I had never read a script in those eyes before. So I think maybe I had a, a deeper instant first love. Yeah. Was it the same for you, Pablo? I mean, it's, I can imagine it's, it's a page turner anyway, but it's, it's something that I imagine was just like, wow, this is, this is something special. Yeah, yeah. Pretty quick, I realized it was it was something that I wanted to do. I was in the middle of shooting American Gods when I read it, and um, a lot of the stuff I had been doing over the last few years before that was was very masculine and very tough. And even though this character has all those elements, you know, he's the guy who's getting out of jail, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the the relationship with the kids is what sold me on it. And the the you know, the ability to be soft and to show that side was uh, definitely something that I, I was attracted to doing at that time. And just the lyricism and poetry of the script was the main thing that, that sold it for me. You know, it, you don't often see in, as much in American cinema that, that touch. Magical realism is something that I think Europeans use so much better than us and so much more often. And I've, I, you know, there's a great movie I love called Girl on a Bridge. Uh, it's a French black and white movie with Danielle Otoy and Vanessa Paradis. And it has this sequence where they're both looking into the camera, speaking directly to each other, recounting the last couple of years they've been apart as if they're right there. And it's this convention I keep going back to. Um, and it's not that we use that convention, but it's the, the ability to kind of... Um, go outside of the box and, and use filmmaking terms or, or conventions that, uh, that don't, you know, aren't as conventional and aren't as straightforward. And so the dream sequences in this and the way that they pull it out of the kind of mundane and the normal for me is, is what set it apart and lifted it and made it uh, a little more transcendent for me in that way. Yeah, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that I was still European in the UK. I don't know if that's <laughs> really official anymore. <laughs> I guess we are, but not official. Yeah, I'm just trying to flirt with you because I see where you I hear your accent, and I, you know. Yeah, yeah, the UK has a yeah lots of things written about it. Let's let's just leave it there. Um, but one yeah, one of the things I loved about the movie was the is the, obviously the love story, and from that first scene where you your two characters kind of meet each other again for the for the first time, it's such a, it's so wonderfully like you said, lyrical and the camera work is so amazing. And then you obviously you guys are in there as well. But what, what was that sequence? What was that scene like to, to film? Um, because it, it, it really comes across on the screen that there's that connection is so real very, very immediately. Maybe Paolo, I'll talk that to you first. Pablo, beg your pardon. Are you talking about the, the scene at the church or the, yes, scene, the scene at the church? The, yeah. Mm. Yeah. When they see each other across the room and, and uh, yeah, you know, instant fireworks. Um, it was great to shoot. It was, uh, it was a, um, one of, one of the first scenes we shot actually uh, in the chron chronology of shooting the movie. Um, the one I, I actually really love and connect to even more than that is the, their first night out at the bar. I think yeah. so much, yeah, the bar so scene much story so achieved in that, see, in that scene, you know, you get so much of their history um, without gratuitous exposition, but it just feels really lived in. And um, that was one of the scenes that I felt that the script really achieved its its best version. Yeah, yeah. They, they, that, that's the I feel lucky scene, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And, then they, and then they try to get lucky. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, Jenna, for you, was that similar for you that, 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 that those scenes were kind of the the early indications for you when you're reading the script that this was a, a real relationship that these people had been through a lot and had also lost a lot of time together that has put them on this course that may or may not end happily ever after. Yeah, I mean, there's something that feels very familiar, you know? I mean, I think that we have a tendency maybe in American 
the cinema to romanticize that sort of like, um, you know, working class, like, uh, you know, there's a lot of her uh, heroism there. And I think that that's really beautiful, but sometimes the box of that heroism is too defining and they need to have a little bit more space, the reality of that situation to sort of be different uh, and change and be messy. And I think it's sort of one of the gifts, I think of this script is allowing this, you know, very archetypical ex-con, you know, even like the body of the character is intimidating and, and very masculine. And he's going through this journey of kind of reclaiming this place where he can be soft and connect and form connections that feel safe. And that's, you know, typically this very feminine journey of like, how to be a caregiver, like how to be in relationship, how to have a family. Um, and then it also kind of switches its head where, you know, the, the woman sort of like is reclaiming her identity, which is sometimes very like independent of the family. Um, so I just, I thought that all of the themes worked really well um, and, and left you with really human stories. I mean, that's really what you want at the end of the day, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And Pablo, I was going to ask you, I mean, you, you, you mentioned at the top of the interview there about you played very masculine roles. Obviously, people know you from Orange is the New Black as well. But this is a character that has flaws. And, and the more years are going on, we're seeing men being allowed to, you know, cry, being allowed to show their weaknesses and everything else. Was that, was that something that played into your thinking with this, that this was something that was very different and allowed you to do things that you hadn't maybe done before? Yeah, I'm, I, I would say less less allowed me to do things that I haven't done before, and more just it felt like an, it felt interesting to mm. be able to portray, you know, to, and to be able to wrestle with, you know, because I'm I myself am a, a man, I'm a guy's guy, I'm a, a, a former athlete, and so I think of myself as a as a guy's guy, but then you know I also I'm a feeling guy, I'm a dad, I have kids, and I have emotions around my kids and. Uh, and and I'm very I'm of course like like everyone else I'm I'm multifaceted I have many sides and so often in um, in movies or TV shows and mainstream media it's easy to uh, the, the easy way to show these things is as a one dimensional thing you know we have a, a, as Jenna was saying the boxes we get put in these boxes and and we can only sort of show what's in that box mm -hmm. and. To be able to try to, to to at first be given a piece of material that is not just the box that fleshes out the whole experience of humanity in a larger way, and then to get to go and play in that sandbox uh, for me was was the attraction. Yeah, and Jenna, for you, I mean, this the character that you play, I, I can imagine, was, is had different notes and melodies than what you've played previously in your in your career. But did do you think you would have been able to do this before? you'd been a mother, Does, did that kind of help sell it to you a bit more in the sense that you'd now discover, you know, you're doing things as a mother that maybe you weren't doing if this was offered to you 10 years ago, say? Yeah, I mean, you don't ever think about it until you're in it. So, I mean, I was, you know, I played pregnant and moderate mom roles before I even had a child, you know, so I don't know. But then there is something very unique about getting to experience that um, journey uh, metamorphosis firsthand. Um, and then because you really, it just gives you more colors to paint with. It's just, it's a, it's a wider canvas. And I think that there's some kind of calling, I think in every parent that wants to um, not only do it the best they can, but really tell about it, you know, because it can be such an isolating and strange and, wild experience that I think there is like a camaraderie I think amongst parents that you want to talk about it you want to share you want to make it um, more of a shared experience instead of just something that you're going through so I think that I just had a more personal intention on doing the film you know not that I couldn't have done it earlier but mm. it's definitely divinely timed that it was given to me at that moment in my life you know yeah yeah time for honest opinions on each other then um you're fan fantastic together in the film but i thought i'd throw the floor open to you both about working with each other maybe jenna i'll throw it to you first honesty we want here <laughs> about okay. working with Pablo. <laughs> <laughs> and vice versa uh, oh no not even gonna say anything bad but the, obviously the film kind of it, you know if your relationship doesn't work the film doesn't quite work and you you two do it so magnificently i just wondered what it was like to, to work together and play play something that was so like you say, so rich and had so many different things going on uh, together. 
Um, well, it was cool because I kind of got to have two experiences, right? So um, my experience with working with Pablo in the film and then my experience as an audience member getting to witness the film, because there's a lot of the film that I'm not in, right? There's a mm -hmm. lot of Pablo's journey that I didn't, you know, purposely wasn't like there, you know, serving coffees or something. Um, so the experience of working with Pablo in, in the film was incredible. You know, I mean, it's really nice to be able to have an actor who's been doing this 20 some years, who's respectful and communicative and knows how to do like consent work and build safety nets and support um, collaboration and is a really strong leader, you know, without also the trappings of being a man in the industry. And, you know, all of these things, I felt really reassured and kind of, um, it's this feeling where I think I've worked with enough of sort of bad examples in a way of like how to be a leader on set that it felt I was like yes amen that this guy's out there just like killing it like going so deep and you know he he really demanded he put himself through such a discipline of you know changing his body and he was living on set in a trailer I mean he had a whole like regimen no like <laughs> how he was entering this physical space that felt not only inspiring, but very like, just very authentic to him and his journey. And so I felt like, yeah, he's a wonderful actor. But then getting to witness it after, I was like, oh, there's all this other work that he was doing that I didn't get to see. And it just, it made me love it even more because he really carried it. And just as an audience member, I just so deeply fell in love with his story, with Waylon's story, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, those, as as I say, I won't spoil it for anybody, but those last sort of 10, 15 minutes, yeah, they are, they are. Congratulations to you, Pablo, because I, I think it's some extraordinary stuff in there. Uh, you've got the final question then, working with Jenna, so you're going to cut off in a minute. So you can be as honest as you like. You can you can throw as many expletives as you want. <laughs> uh, right. But what was the experience of, I'm, I'm kidding, obviously, uh, the experience like working with Jenna and on the relationship between your two characters? Yeah, it's, it's an easy question to answer because I, I, I genuinely adore and respect her. Um, you know, I said earlier, and I, and I mean it, that a lot of stuff we got for free. And so mm. one of the things you just don't know what's going to happen is is chemistry. You know, you go and you just show up and 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 you sometimes when you're there, you still don't even know. You know what I mean? You're just <laughs> people and there's like electrons passing between you. And what is seen by the camera and what's going on between you, sometimes you're not even com completely... It, uh, partial to or, or aware of, you know what I mean? So one of the great things we got is that when 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 we were shot together, there was really nice chemistry. And, and again, that was an experience of watching afterwards where I was like, that's great, that just works really well. But the experience of shooting with her, again, was sim similar to how she felt in terms of just completely professional, completely respectful. The thing I would say the most about Jenna is that she she is a presence and and focuses on presence and and so she's very 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 available for just about anything you know anywhere you want to go she will go with you um and she's ready you know and that's about i think the best compliment you can pay an actor is that someone is is ready to go anywhere you want to go and there was no realm that there was no place i could take a scene or nowhere i could throw nothing i could throw at her that would Take her by surprise or I mean it would take her by surprise in the best way but she was ready for it all and she would go anywhere that I wanted and you always just felt like like um there was a readiness for the moment whatever it might uh it consist of and and that was its own uh, liberation you know there's yeah. the freedom in working with someone that's ready for anything that just feels wonderful and then the experience of watching on screen again is a whole nother thing. And, you know, I knew when we came in that there was going to be obviously a woman lead and that she was going to have a really tough job <laughs> because this role is, it can be ugly, you know, it can be off-putting. It can be, it shows, it shows a lot of um, fear and, and anger and a lot of things that, that might not win an audience over. And to Jenna's credit, you know, she didn't give a fuck about winning an audience over. She threw herself in and she played it as honestly as possible in all of its ugliness and all of its complexity. And it's that throwing herself in and doing it to its most honest version that ends up winning the audience over in the most inexplicable way. And, and so to get to be on that journey with her, to watch her do it, and then to watch the, the payoff of it in getting to see it on screen, 
was one of the more profound relationships I've ever had with another actor. And I can also say, I barely know Jenna. Like we were working so much. It was hard to like fully, you know, dive in there. But the respect is, is deep and true. And, and I'm yeah. just so happy to be a part of it with, with, uh, with her and with Sabrina and the kids. Fantastic. Fantastic. That's a good place to end. By the way, before you go, <laughs> is that a film t-shirt? I want to know. I can see the Lorelei, but I wanted to see. Yes, it is. Look at that. Oh, that's a mermaid on a motorcycle. So, you know, all the elements are. I are need solid. one of those t-shirts in my life. I'm going to have to go on eBay, aren't I? <laughs> all right, guys, thank you a so much. It doesn't fit me. You send me your address. I'll, I'll send it over. It's like so guess. oversized. I was like, oh. <laughs> Again, going back to the European thing, I, how much it costs to send stuff to the UK from America, I wouldn't. Okay, you're right. Yeah. It'd no. be a lot of money. You get one, Scott. You just talked yourself out of it. Oh, uh, yeah. Never mind. Anyway, <laughs> guys, thank you so much time uh, for your time today. Absolute pleasure talking to you both. And uh, thank you for the movie. I, I really, really enjoyed it. So I hope it goes great for you. Thanks, Thanks, so much. Thanks so much. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey.